Here's a screenshot from Madden NFL 24. Here's a screenshot from Madden NFL 11, a game from 13 years ago. When comparing these two images side by side, is it just me? Or does the stadium, camera angle, grass, lighting, and score bug all look way more authentic and realistic on Madden 11? I feel like recent Madden games have this flat and dull look to the graphics, while these later 7th generation titles looked more real. I played the Madden 24 beta and found it underwhelming, as always. I also can't help but feel like every new feature being advertised for Madden 24 is either an old feature EA removed and is now adding back, or a fix to a recent issue. Is this series actually progressing, or just bouncing back and forth endlessly? When playing Madden 11 for this video, I couldn't help but feel like this series hasn't really gone anywhere since then. After 13 years, all EA has really done is make their game worse, and then try and fix what they broke in order to create the illusion that their games are improving. All these steps in the right direction, as IGN would say, are proving that EA has no direction. In my opinion, Madden NFL 11 was the best Madden for the Xbox 360 and PS3. It's not a masterpiece, but with improved gameplay compared to Madden 10, the best presentation in any Madden game, and a more polished franchise experience than you'd find in Madden 12, it's easy for me to consider Madden 11 the peak of its generation. The thing is, when compared to a game like All Pro Football 2K8, a game from 2007 that released for the same two consoles, Madden 11 looks kind of rough. But when you compare Madden 11 to Madden 23, it looks quite good. It's a sad realization to come to. While the gameplay wasn't as well done as 2K8's, and while the presentation wasn't as good as ESPN NFL 2K5's, and while the franchise mode wasn't as deep as it was on PS2 Madden's, for an EA Sports game on the 7th generation of consoles, this was as good as it would get. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of fun with Madden 11, and I think it's a really solid NFL game for its time. But it being the best Madden of its generation, yet still falling short of 2K's older titles, proves that EA was the wrong choice for the exclusive NFL license. Compared to Madden 23, however, Madden 11 looks and feels amazing. Those who were never spoiled by 2K8's fundamental approach to gameplay or 2K5's insane broadcast presentation probably thought Madden 11 was the greatest NFL game of all time. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a deeper look at what made this game so good, as well as where it fell short with direct comparisons to All Pro Football 2K8. This is the best Madden of the HD era, but is that really saying much? When booting up the game, you're greeted with an epic cinematic intro, with cover athlete Drew Brees narrating, while classic NFL films music plays in the background. Instead of lame clips of gameplay like you'd see in modern titles, you get to see real highlights from the previous NFL season, and it really hypes you up. You can feel the passion the developers put into this game. The first feature that stood out to me was the AFL mode. You could select a team that originated in the AFL, with that team's old name, logo, and uniforms, and when playing the game, you got a unique broadcast package with a different score bug, a vintage film grain filter, authentic AFL referee uniforms, and more. You could play with the Oilers, now the Titans, or the Texans, now the Chiefs. I'm a sucker for these retro game modes, and I'm not sure why modern day Madden titles essentially ignore NFL history, despite running on more powerful hardware than ever before. Madden 11 makes you feel like you're experiencing the NFL, instead of just feeling like you're playing a cheap video game. Hold up, did Chris Johnson just get carted off the field? As you'll see throughout this video, Madden 11 had the best visual presentation of any Madden ever. This is just one example of that. This game also featured Madden Moments, another game mode I always loved. Play through classic moments from the 2009 NFL season and change history. I would love a mode like this in newer Maddens, but instead of it being simply from the previous NFL season, I would love for it to include moments from all of NFL history, each with accurate player models, equipment, rules, broadcast packages, and players. 
I understand that it's difficult to license a 53-man roster or even all 22 starters, but I'd be happy with the quarterback in a skill position, or whichever retired players EA has the licenses to in Ultimate Team being the only real players in this hypothetical historic Madden moment game mode. A mode like that is the kind of innovation you'd expect from a game 13 years newer than 11, but instead, Madden Moments no longer exists at all. It'll probably return in a half-baked form in a year or two as the headlining new feature, Knowing EA. Back to presentation, when booting up a regular game, you're greeted by Gus Johnson and Chris Collinsworth. Collinsworth was in Madden 10, but his commentary is improved in 11 as he repeats himself a lot less often. Gus Johnson is simply incredible, and probably the most exciting announcer I've ever heard. Throws it deep to the end zone! Comes down with it! Touchdown! The Giants use just three plays to go 70 yards. In Madden 12, commentary took a step back, with Johnson referring to players by their jersey numbers more often than their names, along with some other bugs, and then EA went with an entirely new team for Madden 13. So I consider Madden 11 to have the best commentary in the entire series. And with modern Maddens using Brandon Godden and Charles Davis for 8 years in a row, since Madden 17, and yes, the same duo is in Madden 24, it's refreshing to hear literally anyone else at this point. The crowd is louder and more authentic in Madden NFL 11. You'll hear chants like Go Pack Go when you're the away team at Lambeau on third and long, and the crowd audio actually gets loud and hyped at the right moment, which is nice in comparison to the dull, lifeless crowd of recent Maddens. Comes down with it! Touchdown! The Vikings get on the board first. Percy Harvin has so much ability and he's well utilized really in this offense. He's a hard receiver to cover and there's really a certain toughness about him. He's going to fight you for position and for the ball. Before a game, you'll see players exiting their team bus, getting ready in the locker room, the team captain hyping up his team before kickoff, fans tailgating and buying concessions, and more. It's the closest Madden has gotten to ESPN NFL 2K5. I think EA is hoping most of its player base today is too young to have played 2K5 because they have completely given up on trying to surpass or even come close to matching the presentation of that game. We'll take a deeper look at franchise mode in a minute, but I want to mention the extra point show while we're on the presentation topic. This is the extra point. Hi everyone, welcome to the extra point. I'm Fran Charles from NFL Network. Well, the regular season is all wrapped up and we're heading into the very exciting wild card round. We'll break down those matchups, but first, Alex will tell us who won the season's top award. Tony Romo is the MVP winner. Congrats. After each week in franchise mode, you'd get to optionally watch a weekly recap, a lot like what you'd see in 2K5, minus the highlight clips. It was really solid, and had EA continued building upon it rather than abandoning it in Madden 13 and up, maybe the presentation in modern games wouldn't feel so awful. If you won the Super Bowl, there'd be a cutscene where your team would visit the White House and Obama was there. If you were close to a first down, the chain gang would come measure the spot. There was even special presentation for holiday games. Look, it's Santa Claus. Look at that score bug. Speaking of the score bug, I really like it in Madden 11. Like Madden 10, it resembles NBC broadcasts from that era. And it looks a lot more like a real broadcast than whatever this generic thing is in Madden 24. And graphically, as I mentioned at the start, the player models, lighting, stadiums, and camera angles all look great. This is the most authentic feeling and looking Madden I have ever played. If you couldn't care less about presentation, you'd be happy to learn that Madden NFL 11 has some of the best gameplay in the series, if not the best. I consider NCAA Football 11 to be a top 3, maybe even top 2 college football game, and a lot of that is because of its gameplay. Madden 11 plays a lot like it. A new feature called Game Flow was added to help make Madden easier and more accessible for those new to the sport or the game. 
It would choose your plays for you, and your coordinator would give you tips on how to properly execute it before snapping the ball. You could also rewind the game after making a mistake if you wanted. All of these features could be turned off in settings, which I'd expect veterans of football games to do, but if you want to play a game to help you learn the rules of the sport, Madden 11 provides that. Another new addition was the strategy pad, something I don't really like. It hides audibles, hot routes, and shifts behind an extra button press, which just slows everything down. It's not a big deal, but it's worth mentioning. The new locomotion system makes player movement feel a lot more refined, and the AI blocking is a lot better than in Madden 10. On the field gameplay is great for a Madden game. I say for a Madden game specifically, because when you compare the gameplay side by side with All Pro Football 2K8, 2K's last football game from 2007, Madden 11 no longer looks so great. Here's a quarterback dropback in Madden 11. Here it is in 2K8. Here's run blocking in Madden 11. And here it is in 2K8. Here's pass blocking in Madden 11. And here it is in 2K8. Here are some tackle animations from Madden 11. And here are some from 2K8. In every instance, 2K8 looks more natural and has more accurate animations. Sure, Madden 11's tackling and blocking looks great compared to Madden 23, but compared to 2K8, it looks underwhelming, robotic even. The players seem to be hopping around and sliding on ice. Still, this is the definitive HD Madden in terms of gameplay in my opinion. There's a nice mix of physics and animations, and everything looks pretty good in motion for a Madden game. There's a feeling of weight and momentum rather than dice roll animations. Controls have no sprint button, so you just move your player and use the right stick to perform moves. Running and following your blockers is fun and feels great. Passing is also Madden at its best. Ball trajectory is actually solid for once, and you can throw high arcing passes that can't be intercepted by a jumping defensive back behind the receiver, but instead the ball goes only where the receiver can catch it. Deep bombs and single coverage would either be caught or broken up most of the time, rather than nearly always getting intercepted like in Madden 23, which is something I think sucks the fun out of these modern titles. Madden 11's gameplay leans more towards the arcade side, but that's how EA Sports games always are. At least it's fun and fair. Madden 12 has stronger defensive play, but also some bugs and issues like the inability to effectively use moves to pass rush on the defensive line. I think Madden 11 plays better, but if you find 11 too easy, 12 will be more of a challenge. Thanks to how bad modern Madden is, Madden 11 looks great today, even better than when it released. But in an ideal world, Madden 11 would feel outdated and underwhelming today had the series actually improved over the years. Games that were considered worse than 2K8 over a decade ago are now seen as classics rather than disappointments. And if that doesn't tell you enough about the current state of Madden, I don't know what will. Franchise mode was pretty good in Madden 11. It wasn't as great as it was on the PS2, but it was close. You could export your team during any time to use it in play now. You could view the Hall of Fame after your players retired if they made it. You could view league records. All stats were tracked from players to coaches to coordinators, which were fully licensed, unlike the generic ones in Madden today. This franchise mode was from before Madden 13 came and took out nearly every feature, so even today it feels deeper than Madden 24's, at least from the beta. You could play the Pro Bowl, another victim of Madden 13's killing spree that returned in Madden 20 as a main selling point. You could view your team's records and stats against rivals, you could control all 32 teams, and unlike Madden 12, there was solid AI logic when it came to cutting players and signing undrafted free agents which were major issues in that game. 
The extra point show I mentioned earlier was a nice touch, and the overall menu design was well thought out. Everything you needed to access was right there on one screen, and you didn't need to dig through menus just to check news or perform a simple action. Relocation in Madden 11 was as good as it would ever get. You could upgrade your stadium with a huge number of options, including things like more advanced medical centers to help your players recover from injuries faster, or just cosmetic changes like massaging seats that help your attendance numbers and ticket sales so you can finance relocation, which by the way, lets you choose your own team name, logo, and even design your own uniforms and stadiums, just like create a team, but within franchise mode. Even Madden 24 can't do this, as EA once again chose to give us no customization options, you just pick from pre-made teams. I've talked to numerous sources within EA Sports, and the NFL did not ban EA from adding this feature. Like many features in older Maddens, this was removed in 13 and has yet to return. It has nothing to do with the NFL, and despite debunking this with an interview with Rex Dixon four years ago, along with numerous other interactions I've had since with people close to or inside EA Sports, I still commonly see this misinformation spread online as an excuse for EA, usually by referencing decade-old articles they lack the reading comprehension to fully understand. EA can add create a team, or a uniform and stadium editor during team relocation. They just haven't added it back because it probably cost them more than they are willing to pay to develop, or it would be too difficult to implement because of the mess of code they've been building on top of since Madden 13. Look at how many city locations there were, and if you didn't want to literally use that city name, you could change it. Look at how in-depth this stadium editor is. Why isn't this in modern games? There is no excuse. You could even get sponsorships for your stadium, and get paid to name your new relocated stadium after a bank or something, or choose your own stadium name. Options. In the offseason when signing players, you could view in-depth interests to see if they'd be a good fit. You could view these players' career stats with one click, and there's a team column. Yet another feature EA removed in Madden 13 for nearly 10 years, only to randomly bring it back in Madden 21 to prove they are listening. All it proved was that this series has no vision. I like Madden 12's live bidding better, but Madden 11 has a traditional, take your time free agency approach if you prefer that. During the draft you could view spider graphs of the player's athletic skills, quickly check and compare free agent options at that prospect's position, show previously drafted players, roster breakdown, team needs, and a scouting report how you scouted this prospect during the season, all by just using the bumpers and not even having to leave the main draft screen. I find the user controls throughout franchise mode in this game very intuitive and well thought out. Everything is on one page and you don't have to go through clunky menus to do something simple like you would in the latest Madden. It's streamlined. This mode has everything you'd expect and it just works. It feels like a more polished, improved version of Madden 23's franchise mode. You'd think a game 13 years newer would be better, but EA has been playing catch up for over a decade. Madden has finally almost closed the gap in recent years in terms of franchise depth, but is that really worth praising? Wow, the latest Madden is nearly as deep as Madden 11. It's depressing to think about, isn't it? Back in 2010, had you asked me what I'd expect Madden 23 or 24 to look like, I would have imagined something incredible. But these games don't progress linearly, they just remove features only to bring them back years later as a selling point like the return of training camp in Madden 24. How can Madden ever be good if it's just endlessly recycling old content? IGN calls it a step in the right direction every year. But where are these steps going? What is this leading to? A game on par with 15-year-old Maddens? How is that worthy of praise or your money? We are stuck in this endless loop of garbage games. And because EA has the exclusive NFL license, Madden is our only option. Superstar mode was a fun Madden career mode. Play as an NFL rookie, import your player from NCAA 11's Road to Glory, or create a new one. Unlike in recent Maddens, you can choose nearly any position, even guards or defensive tackles, but sadly you can't be a kicker or punter like you could in the PS2 Maddens. It was simple, but well done, with no cringy storyline or cutscenes. Being a guard is surprisingly fun. 
I did find the Madden 11 version of this mode to be pretty bare bones when compared to the Superstar mode on the PS2, but it's still a good time since you can choose any offensive or defensive position. Other game modes included minigames, a fun game mode that EA removed for a decade, only to bring it back in Madden 24 as the only real selling point. In Madden 11, these included some classic ones like Rushing Attack, and also some unique ones from this era such as Bench Press and the 40-yard dash. Virtual Trainer was a cool mode that originated from Madden 09. It's basically a tutorial minigame, but doesn't it look pretty sick? The game is rounded out by a fantastic soundtrack that has a mix of NFL Films music, classic rock, nostalgic songs from older Maddens, and hits that were new at the time. It had a nice variety that you wouldn't find in Madden soundtracks today. I enjoy Madden NFL 11 more than I should. The latest Madden games simply don't feel like an improvement from this. I struggle to find anything about this game I really dislike, and not once while playing did I wish I was playing Madden NFL 23. EA hasn't added anything new for me to miss. This game holds up well, but when compared to All Pro Football 2K8, a 16-year-old game, it just goes to show how far Madden has fallen and how EA was never the right choice to make the exclusive NFL game, at least in my opinion. I enjoy playing Madden 11, and I can have a lot of fun with it, and it's easily the best Madden of the HD era. I've been playing this game on my computer with a PS3 emulator called RPCS3, and it runs great. I'd recommend picking it up again, as the 2010 rosters are pretty iconic, and the presentation and overall atmosphere feels more alive than it does in recent titles. It makes no sense that a game from 2010, with gameplay worse than a game from 2007, is more fun to play than a game from 2023, and yet here we are. Over 10 years ago, players were complaining on forums that every Madden felt the same, even Madden 11, and that every year was just a roster update, and they wished there was competition in the market. We are all saying the exact same things today, and yet we look back fondly towards these older titles that were criticized upon release, which goes to show just how little the series has actually progressed over the last two decades. If anything, it's regressed. What has actually improved about Madden since 11? Seriously, I can't think of anything. You may be wondering why I care, but I just love sports. I'd love to play an NFL video game made by people who also love sports. I'd love to play a product made out of passion, rather than a product made solely for profit by out-of-touch corporate suits who do the bare minimum just to appease shareholders. Madden NFL 11 does feel like a game made out of passion, and I think it's the best Madden on the Xbox 360 and PS3, and I'd rather play it than any Madden from the PS4 or PS5 era. Let me know in the comments if you agree, and thanks for watching.